Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about an underrated hero in the watercolor world. Uh, this is a brush that most people don't realize is capable of so many things. Um, they kind of pigeonhole, is that a word? Compartmentalize or pigeonhole this brush into one category, one specific style of painting or subject, but it is so much more. So if you wanna find out what that brush is, let's get started. So one of my favorite brushes, obviously you guys know me for my Princeton Heritage round brushes, but one of my all time favorite Princeton brushes is the Mottler brush in their Aqua Elite series. The Aqua Elite series is also a synthetic sable hair brush. And so it's perfect for watercolor, but it's manufactured or engineered so that it holds a lot of water. So if I do the water test and pull it out, it's literally holding so much water in here that I can squeeze it and keep squeezing and water drops will come out. And so it's really great for holding a lot of water and holding a lot of pigment. So obviously you think flat brush or Mottler brush, it's great for big sweeping strokes like for a sky or some water um, or applying a gradient wash in your backdrop or background of your paintings, which it is excellent for all of those things. But one of the things that I think a lot of people miss out on with this brush and why I think it's one of the most underrated brushes is that it's actually really fun to paint flowers with. So obviously I paint a lot of flowers um, and I use mostly use my round brushes or sometimes I will use filbert brushes. But this Mottler brush has actually become my all-time favorite brush to paint big flowers with. So before you, sh before I show you, obviously I've just done some big, broad sweeping strokes. This brush acts like a broom with a flat edge. So you can also do really thin marks. You can drag it if you have a lot of pigment on your brush. So you can use dry brush and kind of get this nice texture out of the brush. You got some really nice thin strokes. If I press it on the corner of the brush, it can give me this thicker kind of almost leaf shape. And then obviously our sweeping broader strokes for filling in backgrounds. But obviously I, you wouldn't normally think of using a Mottler brush for painting flowers, but it's also one of the most freeing brushes to paint with for painting flowers. So I'm gonna just grab some water and a little bit of pigment. I have this My Mary, oh, I don't know how to say that. I have this My Mary kind of pinky purple color. I'll link to it in the description. I think it's called Laca Quina Credoni. <laughs> so, Italian. Um, so I'm gonna start with just painting a rectangle shape for my first petal in a lighter, kind of tea consistency ratio of pigment and water on my brush. So I've just got a, a rectangle there. And then I'm gonna flip my brush on its side and kind of just use this corner here. So I'm going between using the edge and the corner with like medium pressure on it. And I'm gonna give the edge of that rectangle some petal shape and maybe I'll add some of this darker color on it. And then I'm gonna go on that flat edge on the top of the rectangle and do the same thing. And maybe just have just the corner touching over and leaving a tiny little gap. Like there's a little, this is the back layer of petals that's poking up the front layer of petals. And then we're gonna give this rectangle a V shape on the bottom. And we can leave it like this and we have a flower or we can keep going. I'm gonna add water so it's a lighter texture. And now I'm grabbing like one third of the brush right here and sweeping it down. Same thing on this side. Just being really quick and gestural, making sure all of my petals are pointing back to that same spot, which is the life source where the stem is gonna connect to the base of all of these petals. Then I'll go in with darker pigment 
and accentuate the curves on these petals or the edges. And then I'm just gonna paint in a stem using the top edge of the petal or the brush. So going in here with just water. And I've got this beautiful green gold, Verde Oro from My Mary that I love. This is probably my favorite green color from My Mary because it's like a, a green gold. So I'm just gonna dot that in there. But then for my leaves, I'm just gonna use the side and basically just the corner and plop. So I'm just using the corner of this brush and the top edge for my leaves. Let's bring a stem over here. It's also really fun to stand up and paint with this brush and get really like flowy and kind of almost like you're dancing with it. And just place the brush on the paper. You never know what's gonna happen. If you don't like it, you could always just start over. Nothing wrong with that. I like choosing this brush when I'm wanting to be really big and like kind of has this Chinese floral brush, floral watercolor feel to it. Like you're being just focusing on shapes with the brush. You're not fuddling with the shape and mixing it and around and pushing it around until you get the right shape. You're literally just place, placing the brush down and using the shape of the brush to create the flower. So it's a, it's a different experience painting wise. It feels very different. It's very fun once you get it. Um, but you're really just using the shape of the brush to create these flowers or leaves or whatever you're painting. So obviously people think of this brush as a wash brush, um, but this is kind of an exercise or an experiment in just trying out things that maybe you would kind of compartmentalize as a certain style or direction or technique and just try, see what happens. I obviously love painting my landscapes with this brush, but it's definitely becoming a big favorite for flowers. This brush is very underused and it's always grouped into the landscape category, um, but I think there's so much more to it. And then it also is just Heritage 4050 series, but to the third power with its ability to hold pigment and water on the brush for a long period of time. And so for that reason, a lot of people use it for their landscapes because they're using a lot of water and color for a long period of time to cover a large area, but it's also really fun to use that capability with flowers. Going between the edge, the corner, and the flat part or, or the belly of the brush to create these ball shapes or cone shapes. So we're still shaping the flower the same exact way we would with a round brush or whatever, the overall shape of it. So the Mottler brush you can obviously use for landscapes like this. So these are obviously very basic landscapes that I did, but you can put the background or the sky, this, the water, etc. I did this for our video, the best watercolor practice for beginners to improve quickly. So I just did my wash with the sky and the water using the Mottler brush. And you can cover a large area of paper or canvas very quickly as compared to using a brown brush and sitting there for a long time or whatever. And this shape is perfect for getting those thick, chunky, broad strokes. Um, and then obviously using the side or the corner of the brush, you can do your waves like that. Obviously we did some flowers. So my friends, get yourself one of these brushes. They are very underrated, very uh, high quality, and just a good staple to have in your brush portfolio.
So there you go. I love the Aqua Elite Mottler brush. I, for years, only used this brush for landscapes and big washes and stuff like that. And then when I was on my France retreat a few weeks ago, I just randomly had this urge to paint flowers with it as I was doing a demo. I was about to sit down and do a demo on roses with a round brush, but at the very last second, I was like, nope, this needs to be in the Mottler brush. And I never have never used a Mottler brush for flowers ever before in my life. And I did it during the demo and it was awesome. It was so much fun. I was just flowing and dancing and standing up and waving it like a wand, like I'm some magician. So if it helps, if you're feeling kind of like, uh, I don't really like this Mottler brush, stand up and paint. Try it with the full flowy arm movements and it really helps. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It opened your eyes a little bit and just put some light on this underrated hero because we all love an underdog. So check it out. Uh, I've got the link to this exact brush in the description of this video and in my Amazon shop. Make sure you check it out. And then if you want some really in-depth watercolor tutorials, kind of an art school vibe without having to go to and pay for a college tuition, then join my Patreon. I have a few different monthly tier options that include a variety of different exclusive tutorials, live videos with me. I'm, I do a lot of monthly live art classes and live Q and A's for my patrons. And then there's also a community. So I'm in there hopping in with feedback and uh, asking or answering questions for people in the community and people are making friends in this art community. It's a great place to be. So make sure you join and check out my art school. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.